Perfect. So I am so honored to be here today with you, Marla. Um, for everybody, uh, Marla Skiko is the U.S. and global head of media for the Ford Motor Company. Uh, I am the chief operating officer for Odyssey. And Marla, you have been now with Ford. You joined just pre-pandemic, correct? Yes, yes. So January of 2020, it's a perfect time to start a new role, right? Exactly. And can you just share with the group just a little bit of your background prior to uh, joining Ford? Sure, sure. Prior to Ford, I was all agency side, um, mainly within the publicist network and, you know, all media. So we covered a whole host of categories with a bit of a touch to auto, but not super deep in auto. So it was a huge change of pace and really exciting to then come to uh, the brand marketer side and really get a deep dive and learn the category from the inside out and then you know learn the Ford business from the inside out after looking at it from the agency side for such a long time. Well, you, you and I have in common that we started uh, new roles just prior to the pandemic, but many learnings during this time have probably helped inform your leadership role with the team. Um, and I want to talk a little bit more about that. But, you know, first, when it comes to Ford, unbelievably iconic company. We at Odyssey have had the honor and pleasure of being a partner with the Ford Motor Company for many, many years. And um, I've had the chance to get to know a number of folks from your company and from the agencies that you work with. And uh, yeah, it's, you think about 120 years, really. And there's so many, you know, for a brand to not just maintain relevance, but to exceed. And in some of the things that, that the exciting innovation that you guys are creating and some of the innovative things that you're doing, how do you stay relevant and meaningful for such a long length of time? Right, it's true. I mean, it's impressive and amazing to think mm -hmm. when you come into a company uh, of this size and with this, this stature, it's, it's, it's a bit overwhelming, but also it's super exciting because we're challenged like any other company is, you can't rest on what you've done or what you mean to people. You constantly need to think about reinventing how to stay relevant and how to help people's lives, how to make people's lives better. And so, you know, the, interestingly this year, we spent time um, since the beginning of the year, really thinking about and redefining a, a global brand purpose for the company. Um, and that's to build a better world where people are free to move and pursue their dreams. So not necessarily what you might expect from- uh, No, it's pretty, that's a, right? that's a pretty <laughs> that's huge really undertaking. <laughs> we're just gonna, we're Ford, we're just gonna change the world. We're really, just gonna it's, help it's not you. ambitious at help all. You, you know, go after what you wanna go after. But I think that that's what guides us is we're really trying to help people pursue what they want to pursue in their life, to make their life better, uh, to think about mobility more than just buying a car, but what it enables and unlocks in your life. And that purpose has really been helpful for us to think across the globe. How do we move as a brand? How do we want to show up? How do we want people to see us and, and, and what we're able to do for them? And that's how I think you maintain relevance. It's not getting super narrow on, yes, we want to sell cars, trucks, we want to sell SUVs, but more than that, how can we be a really big part of making life simpler, easier, more convenient, a sense of belonging and trust? There's a lot of important elements that we're trying to also get, get behind. Well, we, we know how important um, our, our number one assets as companies are people. And when you, you know, convey that global purpose to the employees, the many employees all over the globe for Ford, what, how has that resonated with them, with your employee base? And, and how has that helped in terms of employee engagement? Yeah, I, I think that's super important. I mean, really for any company, when you think about if you have a purpose that people can feel and touch themselves, it's easier to see how you can make that come to life for the consumers that we're trying to bring to our brand. You know, if that doesn't resonate for you within the company, you probably have a harder time saying, okay, well, how am I going to design plans or experiences? Well, when it starts with, I can touch and feel that. 
I'd want that for me. You know, I want the company to help me to unlock my own dreams. So I think it's been really powerful to come up with human real language that connects to people, you know, whether it's customers, whether it's the people that work for the company, it's been, a, and that was the motivation behind it to elevate up and, and to make it really real and tangible for, for multiple constituencies. You know, it's incredibly inspiring. It really is. Um, and, I, and I think it's probably really helpful while you're sitting here at this crossroads of a very exciting time for your company. We're going to talk a little bit about electrification, um, but supply chain. Supply chain is challenging everybody, but certainly the automotive industry has been very challenged by that. It affects inventory, the commitments that you have to your customers. So how are you navigating this time? Yeah, I mean, it's been a huge challenge. You know, like I said, I didn't come from a deep auto background, but for everybody in the company, I keep asking, has there ever been anything like this? Has there ever been anything close to what we're seeing right now? And I think, I mean, we use the word all the time, but it's fairly unprecedented that we sit in the situation on the heels of a global pandemic and the after effects of that, making it difficult to get what we need. And, and this is challenging many, many categories, right? So auto is not alone, mm -hmm. uh, but it, it's, it's, it's really interesting. And what I think it's helped us with is a really strong focus, even more focus squarely on the consumer and how are we being transparent and honest and, and as open as we can be about hey, you ordered a vehicle from us and it might take us a little bit of time. We've got, some, we've got some stuff going on, but we're having a lot of conversations about how we can be authentic in what we say so that people who are our customers know what we know as much as we can do. But the thing is, it's so volatile. Even if we wanna predict, that's the hard part. It's super unpredictable. So we're doing our best to navigate that and keeping the customer and that view of how we can be as transparent and open as we can be front and center. Which I think, you know, really does also go back to that global purpose, because when you think about the brand promise overall, you want that consumer to still stay, you know, engaged with your brand, even if their product hasn't arrived yet, or it's not right there for them to, um, that brand loyalty, I would imagine, is so important. So I was reading The Street this morning, an article, and, you know, congratulations on um, the stock upgrade advice. Uh, and I, I think um, there's so much excitement around electrification. And we look at, like, as an example, the Ford F-150, you know, I, it's such an amazing vehicle. And the fact that, that you've got over 150,000 reservations for that vehicle, that's obviously, it's, it's very exciting for the consumers. Um, it's it's really um, interesting for all of us to understand, you know, how much bigger this is going to get for everybody and how you see that uh, from an innovation standpoint and a growth um, perspective. So I guess, you know, where, how does, how is that shifting your company's focus and what are you doing? And so part two of my question is, what are you doing that is maybe unique among, um, you know, the auto manufacturers? Yes, well, I mean, you can hardly read about auto right now if you don't read about the future and how electrified the future is going to be. I mean, what we're really, as, as you've seen with um, some of the announcements that we've had this year, we're, we're betting really hard on electrification. You know, it's important for the future of the company. It's important when you think about it from a global purpose and the future and sustainability and reducing our carbon footprint. All of those things are hugely important and I think it's been clear that we're taking it really seriously. It's not like we're creating, you know, we're going to have one or two vehicles that are going to be where we stake our claim in electrification. It's really electrifying all our icons. And as you see that happen, you know, with, with the F-150 Lightning, you know, with, with, with an e-transit, with the launch of the Mustang Mach-E, these are, you know, our iconic brands that we want to be facing the future. And that means they, they need to become electrified. And in doing so, it's just, it's so interesting to see the revitalization and the excitement um, behind the brands that are tremendously popular. I mean, we know F-150 is the number one truck in America, but then to have an electric version that brings a whole host of advantages that all that electric vehicles do, um, it's, it's just super exciting. It's really exciting in the company and we can see customers are really excited too. That's, that's fantastic. 
Um, I was looking at a cars.com study talking about decision makers and women. I mean, you don't need to tell us who's making <laughs> decisions. Come on. But 62% of new cars um, bought by women and 82% of purchases are influenced by women. How are you, you know, what, is, what does that mean to Ford and, and how are you addressing that? Because I would imagine those numbers are just going to increase. Yeah, for sure. Um, and there's such a strong- I mean, we are taking over the world. Yeah, right? it, know, absolutely. Then sure. that needs to be recognized and we need to take <laughs> advantage of that. Uh, so, you know, we have a really, from everything that we're doing as a company and particularly in marketing, our focus on what are the audiences that drive our future? And these are the audiences that we need to focus on. And it is no surprise that it should be women and um, next to that, thinking about Hispanic, African-American, millennial, the audiences that, that are driving all of the growth in the country are these audiences. And so they're the ones that we are spending a ton of time thinking about, not distinctive efforts, but how to address each of these key audiences in everything that we do. It, it's not a one-off, it really is, how do we think about that from the ground up? So women is that's it's really core and then when you think about hispanic women african american women it's not like it sits in silos but you know the the combination of those types of focus audience groups they're tremendously important for our brand and we're we're really we're doubling down our efforts to think about how to be relevant and how to show up in the right ways to to bring them closer to our to our what we're our offering um, you know, by the way, fun fact, when uh, I was looking at a bio of your interests, Latin dance, <laughs> like, yes. that's so, that is so interesting. Now, if you don't know, Marla has an extensive background in multicultural marketing and, and you've done this for many, many years. Um, and I think that, uh, I, I think that's really interesting, especially as you talk about targeting audiences. How has your work um, and all of the experience you have in, in speaking to the multicultural consumer and audiences, how is that, uh, how's that influencing how you're approaching media with your team? Yes, for sure. I mean, I've spent so many years talking about this topic and the, the concept that you can't just come in and do an, oh, by the way, how will this deliver for X, Y, and Z audience, but way up front, what are the insights? What do we understand about multicultural audiences, whether it's Hispanic, African-American, Asian, what do we understand about those audiences from the inside out? What mm -hmm. is relevant to them? How do we appeal to them based on their cultural background? Not just translate something into Spanish language, for instance, but really what's going to resonate regardless of language and having those, those insights way upstream in the process so that we're thinking about the totality of how we show up for people because we are trying mm -hmm. to help all people and every person, that means understanding through the lens of culture and thinking about that in everything that we do. Well, so, uh, you know, I work in audio and we asked you if you would bring an example of audio and I think it's pretty fitting for us to play for our audience, the Lincoln ad that sure. you, you have um, shared with us. So if we can play that ad for everybody, that would be wonderful. Now, I'm not sure who's actually playing it. <laughs> it's not um, me, so I hope it's someone else. It's, uh, we, got, it's, we got someone, someone's gonna it? in. Someone's gonna do it. It's not me either, but I know it's, no, it's somebody else. It'll happen. Okay. By the way, great job so far. <laughs> Excellent. Well, I can talk a little bit about it if it's not queued up yet. Yeah, why, don't you, why, don't you, why don't you set the table yeah. up and I'll sure. find out what's going on. Sure, no problem. So, oh, okay. Here we Soy Lola Hernandez, and from the sanctuary of my Lincoln Corsair, I confess that hablo poquito español. Many of my Latino friends are like me too. My parents are from Mexico, but I was born in Houston, and outside my house, most of my life is in English, but that doesn't make me less Latina. Hernandez o oh, Hernandez. It doesn't matter how you see it. Soy Latina. Discover the power of sanctuary of the 2022 Lincoln Corsair. Visit your Lincoln dealer today.
That's excellent. And, and you know what I, I, I love about that ad is it, we, that ad can run everywhere, you know, and, um, and, and speak to such a variety of audiences. You must be proud of the work the team is doing in terms of the creative. Yeah, no, it's great. So in that particular case, we had create, we had, um, there was a, a Latin podcast that was created. This was working with one of our streaming partners. I mean, I guess I could keep it neutral. I'll give a little plug. It was, it, this is particularly with, I know I should not be plugging your competition, but um, just to be fair to the, the product at hand, it's a podcast series we happen to do in partnership with iHeartRadio. And the idea was not to just brand it and put for brand in it, but to really create off of the characters in this um, podcast telenovela, have them bring our brand to life and really immerse Lincoln in the content. And so that's just indicative of overall what we'd like to do with any partner, which is mm -hmm. create from the ground up, make it super relevant and have um, the audience show up like they, they would. You know, it, it should be as authentic as possible. And the fact is there's a duality and it's, it's um, multilingual and culturally led. And we're just really excited about the work. Well, you know, I, and that's probably, it's, it's probably a, a, a good segue into, I, first of all, I so appreciate your commitment to audio overall and whether it's iHeart or Odyssey or any of the other companies that offer, you know, really um, multi-platform uh, audio offerings and audiences. How, so in terms of audio's role in, in building consumer preference and driving action, how do you think about that? And where do you, where do you see audio going in terms of your entire media mix? I mean, audio is so powerful. I mean, as you saw from that example, you can, in your head, you can start to, to touch and feel, even though there isn't video involved, you can tell such immersive stories and what we were able to do there with language shows the depth of that character. And you can, you can almost feel it like somebody in your life. Mm -hmm. Spanglish is so common, right? Mm -hmm. And to use that, it's very evocative. And so I think we're trying to do the same thing. How can you have really strong storytelling and do it in audio? It adds a ton. And we have to think about the, the pairing with the audience. Hispanic audiences, African-American multicultural audiences that are extremely strong consumers of audio mm -hmm. of all kinds and streaming audio and, and beyond and podcasts for sure. So trying to find ways that we show up in, in relevant ways and use audio and maximize its benefits, it's, it's super important to connecting with audiences because it's what they care about and not even to underrate music, which is at its core super important for those audiences. Yeah, no question. And we know that uh, you know, the time that we spend in our cars. And, it, and you know, look, as, as, uh, as people, it's been interesting because during the pandemic, uh, the desire to be in one's own car and yeah. driving to destinations was really important. And, um, but then we also had commutes sort of halt a little bit and now coming back and many more people obviously on the road, driving their cars to work and the importance of your personal vehicle seems, you know, that it has a greater and even greater value. And, you know, for, for um, audio, having the investment that's made in outfitting audio and sound and what's, what's you know, there at the, at the ground level of designing these vehicles and what sound and audio brings to them, those offerings have become much more important to consumers. Now, I mean, there's a back in the day when, you know, you would um, aftermarket some of this really great stuff, you know, whether it was Harman Kardon or Bose or, you know, whatever, all these upgraded um, sound opportunities. And now, you know, these are options that people absolutely want and insist in, in their vehicles. So, you know, we're thrilled to know that. Um, you know, when you think about the brand itself, you've got brand message and then you've got driving sales. So, you know, media mix across the funnel is a thing. And so how do you think about that, about how, how, how do you think about your messaging um, in regards to, because you have to balance both. Yeah, I mean, we, we really do. We, we, need to, we need to strike a balance. And it's more important than ever that we do that balance of what's important 
from a Ford standpoint overall. I mean, we're really lucky that we have such a strong brand name besides our individual nameplates. And that's that's distinctive and it's and it's really it's fantastic because we do work for sure to to launch and to sell vehicles, but also there are underlying themes that we want to come through that that, that are what Ford stands for and to and to build the brand, you know, at a kind of a master level. So we've been doing, uh, we've been trying to strike that balance. It became really important last year. I mean, it was really funny, like not funny, but uh, interesting. Eight weeks in, into my job, the entire company pivoted from even selling anything. Our plants shut down and we began to make PPE. And so we couldn't have, and most people have pivoted away from selling messages. It wasn't the right time to sell, but it was a time where we could talk about our brand story, which is we are here to help. And across the globe, our plants, we started working with um, you know, other companies like you know GE 3M and we produced face masks and shields and respirators, ventilators. And we started talking about how we're here to help. And then that message that was our core message as we've moved through the pandemic has changed to more inspirational and getting out of that initial stages, but we're still, still here to help. We still wanna make life easier. We still want to come to you if you don't wanna to come to us. We want to help you in the ways that make your life easiest and best. And we just transformed that messaging as we went through. And hopefully we're, we're going to, con we'll continue to do that. But hopefully we won't have to worry about going back to a place where any plants are shut down and, you know, we're not making vehicles. I, I sure hope not. Uh, yeah. but, I, but that that does, you know, it is, again, inspiring. And I think that it it aligns so well with that global purpose that you were talking about mm -hmm. earlier. You're make, you were making a difference instead mm -hmm. of just completely shutting down the plant, calling it a day. You you pivoted to uh, to PPE, which was uh, really smart and quite remarkable. Um, you know, speaking of, of pivots, so you have spent the majority of your career on the agency side, and now you're on the enterprise side. And so, and of course, in the middle of COVID, um, and, and by the way, how come, I mean, while there is technically a pandemic playbook, you know, or a big joke, it's like, we don't have a playbook for a pandemic. Like, oh, you know, we're just trying to figure all this out. So how has this transition been? And, and I guess, you know, it, the, the second part of the question is, what do you love about your job? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's been really interesting. I guess I should feel lucky. I had some time to actually be in person with people. I know many people, they started jobs it post-March last year, and they've never met anybody except in this format, yeah. right? So it's it's really odd, uh, but I think we've we've become better at it. We've understood that this is this is kind of what it is, and we're doing our best to make the best of it. And I haven't met many people in person on my team yet. Um, so what I've just tried to endeavor, okay, we, we can't necessarily always be in person, but that, that doesn't mean we can't get to know each other. So let's take time. And yes, we have a million things going on. We're moving so quickly. We have a ton of projects, but let's take the time to just have chats about us. Mm -hmm. You know, let's get to know each other. Let's talk about ourselves, introduce ourselves to each other professionally, personally. It just helps you work stronger as a team when you become real people. And we did that usually after work, get a drink or meet in the hall. Well, we don't have those opportunities anymore. So we have to create them in all the ways that we can. So really trying to keep an eye on that because what's the best is uh, working as a team. My team, it's, it's what inspires everybody working with great people. It's, it's what keeps us wherever we work. The people are everything. So it's been fantastic to get to know the people in person that I have and then to get even if you can't be in person, to make it feel like family. Well, you know, I um, I look forward for you to that opportunity when you are able to see the team in person. You know, we've had, I, I've had the opportunity to meet new team members recently in person and see team members that I haven't seen in two years. Yeah. Uh, and I, I, you know, I've been in a different position and I will tell you, it's, there's a lot of hugging that has yeah. gone on. <laughs> Because we can't wait. You just can't wait. wait. You can't yeah. wait. And you ju you're just like, you're in person, you're live. Yes. And, and there's so much to be said for that. Um, you know, we've had the opportunity to sort of sit around a table and brainstorm and say, wow, this is, we really value that now to such a greater degree than, you know, in the past, we would take that for granted. Um, 
Right. So, you know, um, one of the questions that, that has come in that I would ask you pivoting back to audio for a second, how do you measure success in audio? Yeah, I mean, it, there's a whole variety of metrics. Really what we wanna do with any media is not just leave it at media metrics. Yes, there are certainly, you know, engagement and reach and, you know, some, did, we, did we reach enough people and are, and are they tuned in and did they care? But what we would love to do is think of ways that we can get to business outcomes and link any medium, whether it's audio or any media, but can we say that it helped build the business? So ultimately we wanna be able to make that link with everything we do, but certainly you know, we're tracking and being able to understand the level of engagement that we get and compare and contrast that because the engagement is so strong and the time spent is so strong that we, we really want to, to look at that and then get deeper into, does it lift the brand and does it grow the business? Yeah, and you know many of our companies have spent time with brand lift studies to be able to uh, you know, pr prove attribution and provide that data back to you and you're, you're running your own um, research and, and insights as well. So what's your, what is your favorite model vehicle? Do you have one? Do you have a favorite Ford? model? Well, the one that, I, that I'd like to get um, right now, you know, if we can't get vehicles to customers, we are not exactly yeah, worrying about ourselves. Dead. They're not, they're not necessarily <laughs> putting you at the front yeah. of the line here. Well, I do have Ford vehicles for sure. Um, but when I can uh, get a, the, the next one I'd like to get, I'd really love to get the, the Mustang Mach-E. Ooh, it's, it's just so exciting. And uh, besides the it just looks beautiful and it, it's just, it's different to move into electrification, but I'd like to get there. I, I mean, there's no reason not to do it sooner rather than later. And what I understand is the speed and the power that you feel is like nothing I've ever driven. So I just, I can't wait to, to try it out. And I'd love to have that as, as one yeah, of you'll own that car. You Yeah, you'll, that's gonna you, be mine. That speed and that, come on. You're a boss. You're going to take over that car. It's going to be great. Um, so it was interesting. Marla and I had, um, for the audience, Marla and I had a conversation recently and I was asking her about, so what are you listening to? And you replied, TED Talks. And you have a story behind that, which I think is so interesting uh, about your daughter, your 21-year-old daughter leading a, a TED Talk and how you've been coaching her. And I, I, would love everybody to hear more about that because I was super inspired. Oh, sure. So, I mean, I've always kind of, I've liked TED Talks myself. I mean, they're, they're, they're inspirational. They're always told by really great storytellers because they're meant to be a conversation. There's never a teleprompter at TED. You just need to speak it and have it down. Like you could sit down across the table from each other, have coffee and say it. So um, they've always inspired me. My daughter is um, going into marketing herself. She'll be graduating from Indiana University in December. And she set a goal for herself that she wanted to do an actual TED talk by the time she was 20 years old. And she just loves public speaking. She's really inspired by it herself. So. And, and you have a, I'm sure you have a low bar, you know, in yeah. your family. I can just tell Marla. <laughs> there are like, no God, public speakers. No, we yeah. don't want anybody to achieve anything in this family. <laughs> Actually, I didn't push her. It was her own thing. It's just a thing that she loves. She's She's got, you know, this, she's just got her own little internal fire, but um, through a connection, she wound up getting connected with TEDx. There are a lot of local TED chapters and she got connected with TEDx outside of Denver and they're doing upcoming in December, um, a women's themed TED. It's an, a power, empowering uh, girls and women to be change makers in the world. So she pitched them on her idea and she got chosen. So we're off to Denver uh, to watch her do her first I'm, think, I'm thinking first, because there will be more uh, first TED Talk. And have you, um, has it, it's probably given you an opportunity to reflect on your own public speaking and galvanizing your team. I, I would imagine that, that that probably has played into it. Yeah, I mean, it's just exciting to see that at any age, if you want to, if something inspires you, you can find a way. And it's, it's so great, so many young people, we see it all over the place, that there are so many platforms to inspire and to get your get interaction and 
make your ideas known in ways that we could never have growing up. And it's just, it's really cool to see anybody can become a creator as we know, uh, can be an influencer. It depends on the scale you get there, but certainly you have the ability to do it if you want to seize it. And it's, it's really fun to watch. Yeah, I think that's, you know, that's been really fun for those of us that uh, have spent the majority of our career in audio, just the, the boom of audio. And so much of it is about what you just said. Anybody can be a creator and the emergence of, of talent and how it's re how they are resonating with different audiences. And it's really up to us uh, as publishers to create platforms and um, help those makers and creators uh, have a platform and give them an audience. And then it's really just about creating great, great content. Um, but we've seen the influence come in. It's, it's really remarkable. Well, I, you know, we are running out of time. I wanted to see if there, if there are, I don't see additional, I had a couple of questions in the chat that we've since addressed. I don't see any additional questions here. I guess I would say before we you know, before we close out our session, I've enjoyed this so much. Do you have maybe just some some final thoughts on um, as we go into 2022 emerging? You know, we're gonna chip solved, right? Supply chain solved. Hopefully, um, what is it that you're most excited about? Well, first, I'm excited that we will hopefully move into a hybrid environment and we will actually see people in person. <laughs> that will be awesome. And, you know, just as an industry, we're used to coming together at different conferences and events. And I'm hoping more of that will happen because we really do get inspiration from each other. And, it, and it's great to see and hear from, you know, peers across different categories and different, you know, different parts of the industry. It's just that opportunity is awesome. So I'm hoping we will get back to that and that will happen more often. And, uh, you know, just really excited for us to keep pushing and evolving what it means to, uh, to, to do what you were just indicating, to go beyond just thinking about media. It's not just reaching people, but it's connecting and having dialogue and figuring out how we can be as relevant as we can in the spaces that we show up. There's so much opportunity to do that, to make real connections. And I think that's, that's what we're all striving for, uh, but I'm hoping that we'll, we'll keep pushing the envelope when, when it, as it pertains to audio and, and anything that we do, it gets beneath the surface and we really get people involved and inspired and excited about the brand. I love that. That is a great way for us to end. More audio. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. I've, I've really enjoyed our time together today. Thank you. We have a few minutes left, so I'm going to jump in. Great. Uh, I'm going to give a quick anecdote because in 1981, the summer of 81, we launched MTV, right? That was, was who was going to pay for television back then? Everything was free. And all of a sudden, you had to like buy television. But the first video that we played, you remember what the video was, you guys? Uh -huh. Um. Video kill the radio star. That's right. We we said video is going to kill the radio star, and here we are, forty one years later, talking about radio and audio. So we were wrong. We were wrong, and I can admit that you that. were wrong. And I will admit that. <laughs> She's like, "Why are you bringing that up?" <laughs> because I was wrong. Okay. Well, I will say this though, as I listen to you guys, like, you know, Ford, you're not just a vehicle, right? You guys are stitched in the American fabric, and it's not just because of Mah McConaughey. Matthew McConaughey, by the way, was the last thing I listened to on audio. I listened to his book, Green Lights. And uh, so you listen to the guy in your ears. One of him and Dave Grohl are great storytellers. So their audio books are even better. But again, like you guys are a part of the character of a country. And I think it goes back to what Marla was saying. Relevancy, it's the theme of the day, you know, to stay.